Hello, I am Dave Bosch. I am a candidate for the two-seat representative district of Rutland 2 that includes the towns of Wallingford, Clarendon, West Rutland, and Rutland Town from the west side of Grove Street counterclockwise around the city of Rutland to the east side of Woodstock Avenue. I've lived in Clarendon Springs for 32 years. I'm a native of Western New York. I'm the son of a public school teacher dad and a homemaker and retail sales clerk mom. I have a BA from Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio. Early jobs as a kid included picking up potatoes, picking sweet corn by hand, uh, mowing lawns, working as a custodian at my high school, and two summers laboring for our Erie County Highway Department. The job leaving the greatest impression on me though was the three winter breaks during college where I worked at U.S. Sugar at their Pahokee Sugar Mill in Florida, and I worked alongside many Cubans who had fled Fidel's communist regime, leaving all behind to seek freedom in this country, and that was just very impression, a great impression upon me. Uh, my life's work has been working 39 plus years for the U.S. Forest Service, starting in Wairika, California in the Klamath National Forest, where I met the former Kathy Murphy, who's been my wife now for 45 years as of this July. We're blessed with seven children and 10 grandchildren. We worship as members of Revive Church in Fairhaven, Vermont, and we serve in several capacities there. My work in the Forest Service in California was in real estate management and in recreation management. I wrote and administered permits that allowed others the use of your public lands, which is what national forests are, and it included everything from roads to get to private land, to utility lines, to electronic sites, including radio broadcast facilities and things of that sort. And the recreation management included campgrounds, trail maintenance, and managing designated wilderness areas. That work continued, the real estate part of it continued, when we transferred here to the forest headquarters for the Green Mountain and Finger Lakes National Forest here in Rutland in 1992. The last project I worked on was the first permit in the country that authorized the use of national forest system land for a wind power farm. The tall towers down in Searsburg are under permit on national forest system land. That's the first place in the country. After retirement there, I worked four years teaching part-time at the Rutland Area Christian School. I have since stepped away from that, serve as a substitute teacher when needed, and I am on the board serving currently as the secretary to the Board of Directors for Rutland Area Christian School. I am in my second term as a town auditor for the town of Clarendon and my second term as a justice of the peace there as well. I am running for state rep. Again, it's a two-seat district. I am running for the state rep position because there's a great need to rein in state spending and to rein in the increasing regulatory burden that's being placed upon us. I want to see our residents have greater uh, control over their own wages and over their, the resources that they've been able to accumulate. Transportation. We need to fix and maintain to a high standard our roads and our bridges and our railroads so that we residents can get to the goods and services we need and so that the tourists that drive so much of our economy may have a pleasant experience and be more likely to share that with others and to come back themselves. And we need to make our transportation system more resilient to floods. We need to fully fund and support law enforcement community and first responders. We need in education to focus our schools on the reading, math, and science, especially the latter ones, but the basics, 
because we are becoming an increasingly more technologically driven world and we need to be preparing our students to face those challenges and those opportunities that exist in that world. Most important of all, we need affordability. We, and a good example, we need to reform education funding so that people can understand it, they can see what they're paying for, and they can therefore get behind it and support it. That's just one example of the affordability issue. I would like to now relate my own personal encounters with affordability issues. My mother-in-law in 1999 had a massive stroke that left her largely immobile, effectively a paraplegic. Uh, my father-in-law passed in 2004, so my wife moved mom here to Clarendon Springs with us. And with the resources he had been able to leave through his pension as a California Highway Patrol officer, and because he had still one rental house that they'd lived in earlier in his career, there was a bit of income from that as well. And coupled with our resources, we were able to modify our house and put in a ramp and a uh, handicapped accessible rest bathroom with a wheelchair accessible shower. We were able to buy the hospital bed and get the Hoyer lifts needed and buy a succession of vans that had lifts. And generally, we were able to afford her care and give her a, a good quality of life until she passed in 2017. Now, I tell you this not for a big attaboy or patting myself on the back. Just so you know, we have confronted the affordability challenge, the need to provide care and make choices and sacrifices on a fixed income that is getting ravished by, ravaged by high taxes, increasing taxes, and increasing fuel costs and things of that sort, trying to make ends meet so we can still do the best that we are able to do in our individual cases for our loved ones. I recognize not everyone can make the same choice as we were, but we need to make Vermont affordable. I encourage you to vote in the primary on August 13th, and I encourage you again specifically to vote in the election on November 5th. I thank you for your time and attention. Bye.